exactly 30 years ago, the first ever Top Gear magazine hit the shelves. Ollie, how old were you when you bought this? I bought that very magazine in my university students' union, which gives the game away enough. Good, that means I win, because I was two when it went on sale. So to celebrate the 30th birthday of the world's greatest car magazine, we thought we'd come back to where we shot the first ever cover with all 30 cars that have been Top Gear's car of the year. And here they are. So why the banked circuit at Brooklands? Obviously, there's the history. This place opened in 1907 as the birthplace of British motorsport and the site of the first ever British Grand Prix. But it's also part of TG Mag folklore. 30 years ago, this 30 foot high, 30 degree banking was the location for the first ever Top Gear magazine cover shoot. and to kick things off with a bang, the old team had arranged for every single new car on sale in Britain to be lined up and photographed from the gantry across the track. TV's Jeremy Clarkson was helicoptered in for the spectacle, while everything from Rolls Royces, Lamborghinis and Larders lined up to be immortalized on film. Only one manufacturer didn't agree to send the car along, Ferrari. So, three decades on, it was time to put that right with two prancing horses attending and every other Top Gear car of the year. So how do you go about arranging 30-odd cars of all makes, shapes and values to be at the same time in the same place? You make a lot of phone calls. And weirdly, it's the more exotic stuff that's easier to come by. You see, Ferraris, Bugattis and the very finest hot hatches are no problem to get hold of, but the attrition rate of families destroying poor old Fiat multiplers and teenagers binning Toyota Igos into hedges means they're a lot more of a struggle to get hold of. Well, I'm very glad that we only had to position 30 cars here rather than 150. That is one heck of a shoot, isn't it? It's a big one. Yeah, I think the, we'll Probably leave... the biggest ever, even, in, even now. Mm, we'll have to top that. Right, I'm going to leave that here. Yeah. And should we show people let's, around? Yeah, let's Some do the... a little guided tour. Should we start up here? Yeah, let's do it. With, that's an early, one of our early cars of the year, the BMW 5 Series. Now that was just epic at, at the time. Have you ever driven one of those? Never driven one that's not an M5, but I do know it was one of those cars that was still the best in its class when they took it off sale. Like eight years later, it was still about the greatest car in its class. Focus RS. Now this isn't the only Focus RS we're going to see today. Not the only fast forward. Not the, definitely not the only fast forward, but that, the drift mode Focus RS. Is it our favourite? I'd say no, but it was probably the strongest car it, that year. Of but that I don't year. know if it stood the test of time as well as like that has, and probably this oh, as this. well. It's talking of turning the test of time, peak Range Rover. Absolutely. Not only that, this is the half millionth Range Rover ever built. Once the property of England goalkeeper David Seaman. What a ponytail! <laughs> now, Correct. speaking of a sting in the tail, yeah, a very very tail happy Fiesta ST. My favourite one. Yeah, that's the best a... Fiesta ST. Yeah. And down the bottom, a Sirocco. Yeah, which is kind of a curio now because Volkswagen don't make it anymore. They make another tedious crossover. But that, back in the day, 2008, take a Golf GTI, chop the roof. Fantastic yeah, thing. Yeah, still a good looking thing, actually. Hmm. Let's start down the bottom of this next row, shall we? Let's have a look. Now, we had the Pete Range Rover. How about the Pip Squeak Range Rover? The Evoke, <laughs> hey. the teeny one. Yeah, that was the first car of the year after I joined Top Gear, 2011. Did an amazing story with it. We drove it all the way around the world on every single continent. Now, that's the nice it's... ambition that you get from exactly. Top Gear magazine. Yeah. Now, I remember this from reading car mags back in the day, the original Super Torque theory if it was on the wrong mm. road, super sensitive Focus RS. I still think yeah, this is yeah. the best looking hot hatch ever made. I, and it's one of my all time favourites to drive as well. It's just brilliant, yeah. absolutely brilliant. Love that. Another car that's now kind of been lost to history, the yeah. Citroen DS3, back when that craze came out for small, expensive cars that you mm. could individualise, change the colour of the roof, change the colour of the wheels. Now they've replaced it with a crossover. I mean, I know, ugh. but this car is responsible for DS becoming a brand in its own right because that's what happened. This was such a success. They went, it's not a Citroen anymore. It's now DS. Yeah, pretty important thing. Right. Now, speaking of cars that are like the GOAT, yeah. <laughs> some yes. of these are, and this is right up yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. The Civic Type R from 2017, I think it was. Yeah, 16 or 17, somewhere yeah, around, around there. there. But yeah, it's hard to say because they were all looking a little bit unattractive mm. back then. But my word, that was just it's so clean around corners. The Focus RS was still quite fighty. This is just, it's yeah, so if, sharp and agile. If Porsche and, made a hot hatch, 
mm. it wouldn't look like that, thank goodness, <laughs> yes. but it would drive yeah. something like yeah, that. Yeah. And then another big favourite hot hatch at the top. There. It defended its title, didn't it, a few years later? Yeah. Not many cars have won Top Gear Car of the Year several times, yeah, but yeah. Fast Forwards have definitely done it, and another Fiesta ST did. Only at Top Gear can a six-seat MPV join a V8 supercar and the world's best 4x4 for a cover shoot. Speaking of which... Starting at the top, 2020's car, car of the year, the Land Rover Defender. And the car that was happiest getting up a stupid slope. It's very steep, isn't it? It's deceptively <laughs> yeah. steep. Um, also, in about peak Land Rover spec like that, a 90 on Steelys, that's, that's it as far as I'm concerned. I think that's great. Yeah, fine thing. GT86, 2012's car of the year. Yeah, that. that's aged very well, hasn't it? Because the new GR86 is pretty much the same, same car, kind of a bit thing. more torque. Hmm. Um, that is still a great car. Yeah, we did well that year. Well done us. Chose well. Now, this is one of the ones that we've used a slight loophole on because mm. in the 90s, Top Gear magazine kind of forgot to choose cars of the year. It just said what cars it really liked and really rated. And this all aluminium city car, the Audi A2, was one of them. So we've sort of posthumously made it car of the year for that year. I think, you know, very ahead of its time. Absolutely. All aluminium construction, really light, lovable, never sold very many, so Audi killed it. Yeah, but didn't drink any fuel. I mean, you know. Oh, it's brilliant. It's a solution for the future. Relevant solution today. for now. Yeah. Yes. Now, this is why I love stuff like this, because Italy, a country of contrast. You know, you've got lots of Latin passion, so you're going to need space for lots of children. The six-seater Fiat Multipla, the car described by many as looking like it had a disease. Bloody uh, difficult to find in 2023. Well, exactly. If you want to bring it to on a eBay. Shoot. Yeah. <laughs> so this is an <laughs> eBay find. Thank you very much if you lent your new eBay purchase to us for the shoot. It's much appreciated. Yeah. And joined by another a bit of Italian passion down the bottom end, oh, the yes. 458 Italia. The last snatchedly aspirated and possibly peak mid-engine Peak mid-engine Ferrari. Ferrari, I think. Yeah. Just beautiful. Can't set my eyes Beautiful. That. Lovely thing to drive still. Mm. Right. Now, we're moving on the forward. Better start down the bottom, haven't we, Ollie? Yeah, because now we've already had a celebrity owner, haven't we? Yeah, with the Range yeah. Rover, owned mm. by Ponytail of the Year, David Seaman. Yeah. <laughs> This, Lotus Elise, has another celebrity owner, and it is... Uh, yeah, no, not a ponytail wearer, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> so why did you buy that then? I bought it joint with my dad, we've owned it since new. Um, it's now 25 years old, and I still think it's an absolute masterpiece. It's lightweight engineering, it just flows down roads, it's absolutely wonderful. It's yeah. just wonderful. I owned an Elise as well, but a later one, I do think it's one of the great lightweights of all time mm. but again we like contrast at top gear so mm. here's another british open top couldn't be more different a bit of a muscle car the jaguar xk it's uh, the yeah. ian callum car kind of aston martin styling i think it's beautiful yeah handsome thing and a new good color as well i mm. like that speaking of cars in the correct color <laughs> it's uh, the ferrari 355 the f355 with the five valve per cylinder v8 in it yeah. Which is, yeah, and I'd forgotten how attractive this car is actually. And dainty, owned by Top Gear's own Jason, Jason Barlow. Barlow. But this is so important because this is the car where Ferrari kind of woke up, the Honda NSX had come along and they mm. realised, wow, we really the need to... The 348 wasn't good enough. We need to sort ourselves this. out. We need to own up to our flaws. And they came out with a car that yeah. Jeremy Clarkson said was the nicest car he'd ever driven. That's high praise. Wow. 350Z. Now this is another car that sort of came out of nowhere. Nissan hadn't done much with sports cars for a long time and came along with a V6 muscle car. Proper bit of kit, the 350Z actually. And they've continued that lineage to this day, although we don't get the 400Z in the UK. Which oh, is silly, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. a real shame. So this is kind of becoming a bit of a modern classic, but I'd say mm. we kind of got that right at the time. That yep. though, the telly show's nomination for the 98 car of the year, the Ford yeah. Focus, a car which changed family hatchback motoring because it made it fun to drive. Yeah. I mean, that is one of the most important cars of the past 30 years. It it's is. It's not one of the most exotic. I'm very glad we've got it here and we didn't miss it that I'm year. I'm very glad that all the oil hasn't <laughs> come out of it and landed where my feet are. Yeah, exactly. Right. Right. Let's go forward another row. Right, and we start can start at the, the top. top end again. Ford is busy killing off legends like the Fiesta and the Focus, but luckily the Koreans have found their hot hatch mojo just in time. Hyundai i20N. Now a recent one, isn't it? Hi, yeah, guys. Yeah. Hot hatch momentum continuing into the super mini class. Yeah, they're proving they can do it wherever they where they set their mind to it, really. Yeah. Lots of modes, lots of noise, lots of fun. And Compact, then... small, not compared with a lot of cars here, but yeah. Terrific little hot hatch. Yeah. 
fine yeah. thing and well this strawberry shortcake next to you <laughs> not was this frozen color? berry no i'm not i'm not i'm <laughs> I really quite not like it i quite i don't mind the purple interior weirdly though now but isn't the it titan, strange yeah. that the only porsche ever to win top gears car of the year in this 30 year era yeah is the one without an engine i know the all electric Taycan. yeah yeah well did we, maybe we need to skate over that because maybe we're not too proud of having missed out some of those whoops it's only called the 911 maybe we should drive yeah, one of those yeah, now yeah. again right tell me about tell me about this well the toyota Rigo is an interesting one because in 2005 the magazine staff couldn't decide what was the best car of the year so they picked two one was this incredibly cheap to run city car and the other one wasn't but we're going to come back yeah, to yeah. that later it makes me really really sad because loads of my friends had these when we first passed our test and now toyota's killed it off its sister cars from citroen and peugeot are gone as well we need more city cars really we do we also need more bmw to build more cars like the i8 yeah when did bmw make a beautiful car like this last i mean exactly that's an engineer well, that 2014 wasn't it yeah what an amazing bit of engineering that car is mini Still engine in the back hybrid mm. drive yeah. the best Four scores. seats inside yeah it's great well, it's practical and it's, it's, it's just a beautiful looking thing before we got all silly grills and stuff at the front turn some heads and yeah, then there's a, there's a company who can do grills down the bottom alfa yeah. romeo can do a good grill yeah i think we made this car of the year because we were just so staggered and stunned that alfa romeo had stuck the landing they yeah, came yeah. back with a sports saloon and it was right up there with a bmw m3 and we were just so shocked so gratified <laughs> that they'd pulled it off we thought oh, it's got to be yeah. the best car of this year i think it was yeah stand by that one completely and making our way through to the cars that are on the front of the new magazine cover it's quite mm. a collection as well isn't it it's been very careful around this one yeah we'll leave that <laughs> for a moment because i want to talk about the car that totally changed the perception of what we thought of as a good audi the original r8 open gate manual rs4 engine i mean is there a car here that you want to own more than that no that's not i really quite badly want to go away with that i hope your release isn't listening but <laughs> yes. yeah that is stunning it just what a thing i think it's probably better than the new r8 you know it is right what about this thing tell me yeah. about the engines in this because there's a bit of controversy well they the this is the original the 16 valve but it was everyone got much more excited when they bought out the five cylinder engine with a turbo the 20 valve turbo engine which was 220 brake yeah. this one though was the sort of most the pure original one yeah. and it's still a really distinctive a car it's I mean, just there's nothing else watching, like it. we should say that this is a fiat coupe this is what a cool lifestyle vehicle looked like in the 90s before all those horrible crossovers came along and the fun fact about this is it was designed by chris bangle the man who was chastised for destroying the styling of bmws this thing looks fabulous and so do all of the bmws that he drew as well so read into that what you will all right moving on we have huh, the car that doesn't need an introduction it is the bugatti veyron 2005's car of the year joint with the toyota igo directly behind it only top gear can bring you the variety that says the two best cars in a year are a one liter 70 mile per gallon city car and an eight liter 16 cylinder <laughs> hypercar that can do 253 miles an hour we got that one right didn't we yeah that yeah. is one of the all-time <laughs> legends but for me personally so is the car behind you sir yeah did you used to own one of these or something i did i had a 1.7 yeah. liter ford puma and it is fabulous and i felt very nostalgic snicking that little gearbox along because it's it lovely here. isn't it it's so original fun to fiesta drive. chassis just a really sweet car to drive little enough performance mm. just a bit of a honey really it's that, such a shame that the puma now is not what the puma once no, I was, was just gonna say that is what a puma will always be to me and then i guess we should end on the reigning top gear car of the year yeah the honda civic type r yes it's forty-eight thousand pounds which is a lot of money yes but it's also just there's there's nothing else like it there's nothing else that has such determined cornering dynamics really yeah we don't really do reigning cars of the year but it would take something very impressive to knock that off its perch it's still mag Magnificent. Wow, what a what a diverse group then, 30 years. I know, I think we can be quite proud of that as a back catalogue for ourselves. I think we got most of them right, maybe a few slip ups, but let us know what you think in the comments, which of the top gear cars of the year don't deserve to be there and which are your favourites. And if you want to know more about how we put all of this together, buy the issue, on sale now. Good. Right, shotgun not moving the Veyron <laughs> off the banking.